the rights-based aspect of that, saying, can we agree that that's what we're committed to try and achieve, is the basis for a bilateral or multilateral agreement. So from that point of view, it's good. And I started off by saying, I think, if you remember, that one of the big purposes of this architecture is to mobilise funds. You've got to have a narrative. If you want to keep the readers of the Daily Mail happy in this country, you've got to have a story of at least mutual benefit um, in order to justify why we have an aid programme and why 0.7%. If you don't have the narrative and it breaks down, you will lose political consensus. So that's one thing. The second thing, um, I think there are a set of interesting questions now, which are post-2015 questions. Um, they are in part about China, they're about India, they're about Qatar, and a whole bunch of other place, places and groups who have become players in the international development business, who are offering resources to support educational development. China is investing heavily in higher education in Africa, not basic education. It doesn't buy into this international architecture. It's not part of the same party, but clearly it's a very major player. And one of the questions, of course, for India, China and others, um, is if you're going to have an aid program, you, you, everybody's got the same problem. What's the narrative? Why have you got an aid program? <laughs> you know, is it really about um, securitization from your point of view? Is it really about the mutual benefit of developing markets for the things that you export? What's it about? So even in China, even in Russia, and even in India, the kind of discourse that surrounds this, you know, why are we doing it and what are we trying to do? Is it rights-based? Is it growth-based? And if so, what does that mean? Is, you know, equally relevant? And interestingly, you know, was not a discussion in 2000, was not a discussion in 1990. There was no Chinese aid programme of the kind that I'm talking about <laughs> um, at that time. So, uh, yeah, I think those, those questions sit on the table and the relevance of this to different sets of countries is an ongoing challenge, as they say. If you're honest, this architecture really had significance only for the significantly aided countries. Most other players were indifferent or if they had an interest, it was because they were donors. So, you know, pick whichever country you like, but if I, you know, I talked about Argentina or Malaysia and, and talk to my friends there, they'd say, well, it's got nothing to do with us. <laughs> Pretty much all our children go to primary school, that's not our problem. Our problem is our labour market and our growth. Um, why are we here? We don't have an aid programme. And anyway, we don't believe in universal goals. We believe in goals for us and our political economy. So I think those are very interesting and very different contextual aspects to the discussion as it takes place now. Well, thank you very much, Keith. And if you want to hear more, Keith's going to be doing a panel at the Upfield Conference. He's going to be looking beyond us. He's today gotten us to look back a little bit. He's going to be looking forward forward with a group of um, group of individuals. So go to the um, conference website to find out more. Keep an eye on the Upfield Community of Practice, where the roundtable and others that are going to be at the conference will be featured between now and September to keep an eye on the debates and such. But um, if you join me in saying thank you for leading us to. I have some giveaways here for a first come, first serve. All right. And uh, to go and visit the Craig website. Right.